Asmita. You know, it combines uh, identity and uh, belonging. So, is there any word? I don't know if in the uh, Goan uh, concrete language, but it means like uh, uh, when uh, uh, the uh, because you, when you are going up, the, the Goa must have changed in all these years. So, with which Goa you identify yourself with? Because I was talking to uh, our beloved Damodar Mauzo Bai yesterday and he was telling if you come to Goa, if you speak to someone in English, he will answer in English. If, if, you, someone, if you speak in Hindi, he will answer in Hindi. Yeah. So there is, uh, people won't find need for to speak in Konkani. Right? Yeah. But the scene must have been different when you were growing up. Yeah. So with which Goa you identify yourself with and uh, uh, you would like to know like uh, the growing up years, your childhood years, the 60s, 70s Goa and the identity of that Goa. Okay, the very fact I did Natsoya sort of answers because that is that in even before I was born. So it starts in 65 and goes up to 74 and then culminates in 95. So that is the Goa I identify with. The earlier Goa till 95 and then things changed and 2000 after the millennium things further changed. Yeah. But uh, the Goa I identify is I come from a very small village called Galjiba so, which was stuck in time. Yeah. So. So that's the Goa I sort of uh, interpreted in the film and that's the sort of Goa which you see in Natsoya. So the contemporary Goa is, I have yet to explore, so maybe the next film, oh, I don't know. Okay. If you can elaborate on... Uh, Mike. Yeah, yes. If you can elaborate more or, you know, the, uh, your childhood days, like the community you are living in, mm -hmm. the village or maybe a town, small town, mm -hmm. maybe your festivals, the music, the dance, that influence you and maybe the literature you are reading in your own the careers. So I would like to explore, you know, I would like to discuss that growing up years yeah. in terms of the inspirations, the films you might be watching. Yeah, okay, growing up years, the yeah. films, I can see you, the films I didn't watch because in Kankon and Galjibak, we used to have one film a year. Okay, the iconic uh, Nirmon, they used to screen every summer holiday. So the buzz around the film used to be so much, we used to run behind a vehicle which to promote. And then on the day of the film, I used to invariably fall asleep. So I never got a chance to see the film. But uh, I know the, 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 the excitement around it. I didn't grow up on cinema as such. Okay. So in that, uh, this. And uh, in terms of schooling, I mean in terms of literature, I think in the school we, we could pay 25% and we could watch Laurel, Laurel and Hardy and Charlie Chaplin and we were exposed to cinema in that sense. But nothing to say, okay, inspired me at that because we were just consuming things and I had no clue about what I wanted to be at that era. So, yeah, so it was a natural childhood up to more mischief than actually <laughs> chasing literature. So, uh, so uh, then uh, at what stage of your life mm. that you have decided that you would like to explore with this filmmaking medium? But where, exactly how your entry did happen actually? Yeah, see I was interested in photography. So okay. I used to make my photography. Yeah, yeah. photography, I used to catch hold of my friends and take them to the mountain uh, Margam and make them pose. And with that same excitement come to Benjamin and develop that role and see the print. So that was my exposure, starting point. My brother who is in the audience bought me my first SLR at that time when I was in 9th standard. So, so with that I could explore photography and by the time it was 11, 12 standards I pretty much sure I wanted to be a cinematographer. So then I headed to Bombay. And then yeah, I started with cinematography, then editing, and now directing. So the journey started from there. So I was started interested in photography, images, and then changed into cinematography, and then. So it's been a more down. organic than uh, yeah. Uh, you never thought about the whole like uh, 
it happened and yeah, you started yeah. exploring the different uh, departments of filmmaking one by one. Yeah. I wanted to join FTR but FTR became a post graduation course. So I started working and doing graduation. By the time, I, after three years of working, I didn't feel the need to, to be formally educated. So I just carried on. So I, why go to a institute, learn for four years, then unlearn, and then make a... So I just learned on the job, actually. And I interacted. I mean, I had collaboration and whatever. I learned on the job. Okay. So, uh, um, while I was, I was you know, going the, through your the visuals of your film, mm -hmm. I have seen those, you know, uh, jazz groups and, you know, so I have read somewhere that in uh, late 80s or 90s, so they, they used to perform in South Mumbai and the uh, groups were from Goa. And then later on, maybe you can correct me, mm -hmm. but I have such impression, I have read it somewhere that the Goan groups used to perform in uh, restaurants in Goa and then later on the whole culture uh, died out and then they moved to the Bollywood and uh, your film also uh, somehow depicted touch that thing. So, uh, like moving out of Goa for prosperity and other purposes and then, uh, you know, uh, you yourself moved out of Goa few years ago and now you are working in Mumbai. So, uh, how you deal with that alienation, you know, mm. you, the Goa is a whole, the whole milieu is different from uh, Mumbai or Mega City. Mm. So, uh, would you like to tell us about that, like, how, how does that migration happen and what are the pains of that migration? Yeah, so the earlier musicians, I think, moved uh, due to lack of opportunities here and there's a lot of other impact on it, why Goans moved out of Goa and yeah, so music was one they took to and uh, which gave them uh, a day job sort of and uh, when jazz came was introduced with uh, in, in India, so they were the first one to step up because they could read the scores and just be part of the band and so that was the glory days of 50s and uh, I think uh, Let's yeah, 40s, 50s, 60s actually and uh, then there was prohibition by the Maharashtra, I mean Bombay state that, that okay. time. Right? Gujarat and Maharashtra was one state. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, so that put an end to the entertainment because like in, alcohol was integral part of the okay, club. So that uh, division of uh, Maharashtra, Mumbai state, Not division. somehow impacted. Uh, there was prohibition before that. In, like in Mumbai state also. In, yeah. Okay. Prohibition of alcohol. Okay. So that uh, sort of reduce the musicians, the gigs. They could only play underground. So I think it's yeah, it's after independence we wanted to assert ourselves, our culture, Indian culture, and wanted to get rid of a lot of Western things. So I think it was just a collateral damage. Okay. <laughs> and then they had to move to I mean but that also turned to an opportunity where they moved into the I mean Bollywood. And uh, made a name for themselves there. Okay. So, uh, uh, as we were discussing just before the session, like uh, uh, you are coming from first generation of uh, filmmakers, born filmmakers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as we see in the regional cinema, like I come from Gujarat, so we have, you know, uh, there is no s any such uh, 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 aspiration to become a, uh, to make a local Gujarati. Uh, films, you know, and uh, the similar scene is here, I guess, also in Goa. So, how difficult it is, it was to to be a first generation filmmaker here in Goa, and like uh, how your uh, the thought about the, your first film came into your mind, and how you started, and uh, how you uh, each uh, like uh, did you collaborate with the Goan technicians or uh, technicians from Mumbai, and how the whole project went. So if you can elaborate a little bit about your first film and project. Yeah. So basically I didn't struggle to make this film. But yeah, after a successful career in advertising, I wanted to do something back for the state of Goa. So that's how Natsuya was in the pipeline for a long time. And when I 
set out to do it, there are a lot of people from Bombay, the technicians, who all jumped in to help me out. Okay. And so did my family and friends pitched in to make it happen. So, yeah, so it was made it, um, but it was not made with an eye on the commercials. So we didn't, uh, I knew it uh, will never make box office hit out of it, but yeah, but it will create a perception that uh, about uh, Konkini cinema. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted uh, more people to be doing films than me doing films. So it was that creating a perception about Konkini cinema and saying it's people will come and watch. And true to it, yeah, after that, I think there were a lot of films made in Konkini. So, yeah, hoping out of quantity will come quality one day. Yeah. Okay, and so we'll get there. So it was one of the motives of like to start a culture also when you have started. Yeah, in the way, yeah, the way we released it, the way we handled it, the way we, I mean, was to make sure that uh, it will start a movement. I mean, it will cre uh, create option. Like we released it in a very unconventional way. We didn't okay. go the route what normally used to happen in Goa. Like release in the multiplexes and all. We didn't do it. We released it. Like we literally went begging to open the venues which existed in Goa and made them cinema ready and started exhibiting it there. So and we left our footprints in the sand for people to follow and I think people did follow but now I think those venues are also out of bounds right? for whatever reasons I don't know. So uh, through the journey of uh, Ashok Kampasa, what I I can relate it with, uh, you know, one of my favorite uh, filmmakers, Alfonso Cuaron. Mm. He, uh, he has always been making commercial Hollywood films and he was a, uh, you know, commercially successful director. Then, suddenly after a few years, he made this wonderful film, Roma. Mm. It was a black and white film and, uh, you know, he, he somehow tried to uh, you know, uh, identify with his identity, a Mexican identity, a Latin American identity. And again, uh, you have uh, tried to explore the Goan identity. But uh, somehow, your film and his film also, it travel throughout, you know, across the world. Mm. And people can identify with different identity, mm. different milieu, different belonging. Mm. So, what exactly happens when, uh, how, like, uh, of course, it is about the uh, basic human emotions, but again, you are depicting uh, some different world, you know. So, how uh, uh, different cultures relate to such films and uh, 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 like people celebrate such films uh, and give a good response commercially also. So, what do you think, like, uh, why people like such films and they appreciate and celebrate such films? which comes from a different culture. So I think, see, I, I wouldn't, I mean, if there's a good story, I think it will uh, strike a chord with everyone. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, identity, as in the, what we did with Tansoya was nothing extraordinary. We, we were just honest with what we were dealing with. Okay, so the culture, the places, the spaces, the styling, the type of people we cast it. So there was great honesty in it nothing more to it and I think that uh, sort of also showed otherwise there was a misunderstanding about I mean uh, misidentity about Goan and Goa like who are those Goans I mean if you see Bollywood every Goan is portrayed as a drunkard right okay and uh, and at the same time in my film every Goan drinks but there's only one drunkard or he might be a man so I leave it up to the perception so those are the things you are breaking it down also, right. you know, the misconceptions, the cliches. Shows, yeah, cliches, what has been portrayed. Yeah. So I think, yeah, so it, uh, I, it was made for many purposes and I think I took a, I mean, uh, well, what cloud com comments, so only in conversation then I can say what was done, why, how, what, otherwise, yeah, otherwise I leave it up to the people to interpret. Okay, so you had like, uh, inclination from beginning uh, was music and to explore the theme of uh, your, your film, yeah. So, 
uh, or you uh, when once you uh, you have a story you started exploring music or you had it from uh, your like, early days like from childhood your like jazz and you know the mm. things which you have showed in your film mm. so uh, could you tell us more about the uh, identity of uh, through music whole music and the culture of music in goa mm. yeah so i don't know see when i wanted to do a konkani film Set up, set about thinking. I knew it had to be about music, but uh, to tell you fact, uh, I learned a lot when I decided. The day I decided, I started researching and searching and refining and talking to people from that era and whatever, and try to understand that world, where to set it in. Then I realized, okay, this guy's there's much more to it than what we sort of take it. And this guy's contributed a lot, so. Then the film changed. It became a responsibility how to portray them. So there's a lot of uh, effort that went into it in that sense. To uh, uh, and that's how that it came. It became about music, and then we percolated. I mean, I mean, sort of uh, narrowed it down to a set of songs. And so, what that for me, the love story or the romance is just a uh, excuse to also say the bigger. Uh, other comments also so i think yeah so that is how the film arrived eh, right so okay. it's a fictional i mean a uh, story but it uh, but it makes a lot of uh, comments which uh, i think which the goan those are facts right so uh, it's also <coughs> commenting about the social political yeah uh, arena also yeah. like and when we talk about uh, identity and we are living in a time when you know the things are changing really fast if, uh, if i talk about gujarat uh, the recent news of you know uh, the redevelopment of savanti ashram now that uh, it is a, a gujarati identity it's a national identity also it's a world heritage similarly uh, similar things happen in punjab also with jallianwala bag where which was later now it is they are Changing it into commercial, so irrespective of the political uh, parties, the things are changing. You know, the uh, the places of uh, our cultural heritage, the identity, the belongings, they are changed for commercial purposes. So, is it also the case with Goa, like the places of identity, the beaches, or maybe you can uh, tell us more about that, which are uh, getting commercially exploited and which is destroying the identity yeah so i'll tell you my take on it since, since goa doesn't have a film culture so there's not much moving images about uh, goa okay correct so that is why like whatever i mean uh, my uh, film sort of documents uh, so that's why the honesty in uh, the cinema in, uh, has to be there because it's a document for the next generation who might not see this world Yeah, this sort of goa. So it's ever changing. So, so one way is to document, and another thing is also to entertain. And that's how the uh, I mean the film was made. Okay, even the next film which I'm thinking, or oh, which is there in my head, is again I want to set it in the next decade. So, because the, it's not just political onslaught. There's, there's a lot of other onslaughts which is uh, which will change the landscape and the cultural eventually. Not today, tomorrow. I don't know how long it takes. It might delay it, but yeah. So it's important to document what Goa is. I think it will leave. I mean, the Goa I know, I grew up with. I mean, that's what I'm trying to, uh, what try to do, and what I'll try to do going for the future. I mean, try to document a Goa which is which will change eventually, like how your Gujarat or Jammu and Kashmir, but. Besides political, even the other right. uh, uh, migration or whatever happening. So you have raised a very interesting point. Actually, I was just thinking about this while you were talking. That you know, uh, it's also a medium of documenting that particular culture, time, people into time slot hmm. of history. As when I was making my last film, I have a very uh, important scene of that film was shot at Savarnathi Ashram. 
I, I didn't knew that it's going to be redeveloped later on. Mm. So my film became the last film which was shot at the original Sabarmati Ashram. Now it is somehow documented yeah. in that film, you know. Okay. So you have raised a very so this is also yeah. So this is also uh, this way uh, films can uh, uh, they can archive the identities Correct. of the places and people. Yeah. yeah. So this is also a wonderful observation, right? Right. So, uh, 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 Roy, so uh, as you said, you have not seen many films while you were growing up during childhood. The, it was not easily available to you. Uh, so, then uh, I am wondering, like, uh, at later stage when you, have, you ventured into the filmmaking, so what are the names filmmakers they really inspired you? And uh, uh, the, that films, you can if you can talk about the filmmakers, uh, maybe the uh, literature also that inspired you in your work. You know, because uh, filmmaking is uh, uh, it's uh, the only art which combines all other arts, as we know, mm -hmm. the music, the literature, mm -hmm. the history, uh, everything. Mm -hmm. So. There must be inspiration from other art forms also. So, and again, the art forms of Goa also. When you are uh, documenting a Goan uh, experience through your film, mm. uh, so uh, uh, would you like to tell us something about the other artistic uh, identities of Goa, which you you might have explored uh, during the research of the film? Uh, Maybe otherwise. Mm. Apart from music, like. Yeah, so I think uh, apart from music, uh, like, okay, I, my exposure to uh, has not been to uh, cinema as such, but there were posters always okay. in town. And the uh, film used to take months to make its way into theatres. And we used to make our own stories looking at the poster. So we were creative even then. <laughs> So, like, uh, so that was the culture, and but to go to the cinema did not be, but to be engaged in those posters, go to the cinema halls and watch those uh, snapshots, just to display it in the sort of a window there of the cinema. I mean, what film is going to come, and we should discuss our own stories. So that exposure was there, but not necessarily watching a movie. Okay. Yeah, and uh, then uh, next, what you are. Yeah, so again, uh, uh, maybe if I uh, uh, you can add up to this, like uh, you worked, uh, you started working as a cameraman the initially, mm -hmm. and then you must, uh, you are coming from the first generation, so you must have seen the technical uh, changes also, you know, mm -hmm. in the filmmaking whole process. Because, you know, um, um, when I work with uh, one of the director, the senior director, and uh, he was telling me that uh, they wanted to uh, shot some scene at the border of Kutch, and they have to take the you know whole uh, crane to the place, and they have to travel all the way to uh, the location, and when they reach there, the sun has already set, <laughs> they they have to come again next day, and now the filmmaking has become much easier, uh, everything is much accessible, you have drawn, you can take drawn shots and everything. But you have experienced all the technical changes all this year. So, uh, it must be a, a thrilling journey, I, I, I must say. It must be, it must be an exciting journey throughout. And so, how you find yourself uh, among the new developments into the technical development? This is a more technical question. So, the in terms of camera or in terms of uh, uh, the other techniques uh, which involve the post-production or maybe filming the mm. film, yeah. So, tell us something about the technical changes happened during all these years. Yeah, the biggest change I think is from uh, uh, analog to digital, right? Uh, so, I started with the analog days and then adapted to the digital world and survived. So you have to think about the prints also. Those yeah, days. yeah. Those days. See, those days was you have to think it through. Right. Okay. There was. It was not the era of undo. We couldn't do undo. 
Right. We have to redo. You have limited prints and you have to... No. Uh, uh, you do. Like today, on the digital board, you can undo. No? Right, right. You can do undo at many levels. No? In a manual world, there is nothing but undo. You have to redo. Whatever process goes wrong, you said you can't be sorry. Right. And type control Z. So, that was not there. So, we, we had to think it through. So, there was very little scope for uh, error. Right. error. I think that's the only discipline. In terms of discipline, what is the changes? Otherwise, technology can change, you can adapt to it. But uh, the discipline is missing. I mean, also because it's easily, a, uh, you can do many things now. So, you don't think it through. Right. Because there is scope for uh, error. But earlier it was not like that. Earlier you had to think through the processes and then commit. And if you had to commit a mistake, then it would cost you dearly. Because you have to redo it. So that's the only big change. Okay, so it's a commercial aspect was more Commercial important. and yeah, the discipline I would say. So okay. you're, you're much more tighter. So, uh, and once your film got released in 2014, the whole culture has started. And maybe, <coughs> sorry, new filmmakers uh, might have entered you onto the scene, you know, on go on films. So, uh, what was your observations about the other filmmakers, young budding filmmakers here? <coughs> Sorry. Uh, or, or would you like to advise them something, or maybe not an advice, but uh, like what what or what are your observation about the new budding go on filmmakers? <coughs> I don't know, I have not seen much, but whatever little I have seen, it's a good sign. As in, uh, and as I said, out of quantity will come quality and uh, yeah, so they just have to be honest with their stories and not uh, get uh, inspired, I would say. Get inspired by the world around you then, versus the other uh, industries, no? like how we say Bollywood or Tollywood or whatever. So have you own... Uh, language for your own state. I think that is what requires. Because what I have, uh, my personal observations are, you know, uh, because it's not because I am coming from, I have a literature background, but uh, what I feel is uh, that new filmmakers, they are not reading much of the literature, you know. So when you are making, venturing into filmmaking, I have an impression that they should have exposure to the literature, their language, their dialects, they should know the whole cultural aspect of So that is what uh, is what is 